Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. She cheated on me with the guy that I thought was her cousin. Throw away because I'm not proud of it, but it felt appropriate at the time. This occurred in 1998, give or take a year. I was approximately 22 years old at the time and had been dating this lady for about 1.5 years. I was smitten by her because she was stunningly beautiful, intelligent, and humorous. She was just a year my junior, but she still lived with her father, who was quite strict. Even though she was 21, he imposed a slew of restrictions on her, including curfews. Surprisingly, he assumed she was a virgin, despite the fact that I wasn't even her first. When he realized we were having, he informed her she couldn't see me anymore. We continued to date, but it was increasingly difficult since she was always sneaking about. She often used her cousin as a pretext to get to me, but she regularly stopped at his house for a long to have a cover story. She said that they had been close since they were children, so this was natural. I eventually discovered that her cousin was not, in fact, her cousin he was her father's closest friend's son, but according to her, she always called him cousin and thought of him as a cousin. I began to notice more and more things that appeared out of the ordinary, and I became really suspicious. She informed me one day that she was going to have lunch at a specific place and would then come over. Soon later, I received a message on my pager instructing me to meet at Red Lobster at 12 p.m., then I received another message informing me that the communication was intended for her father. I dashed over to the restaurant, located her vehicle, and parked a long distance back. Another vehicle arrives, her relative gets out, and they embrace and kiss before heading inside. I returned home to wallow in my pity. I canceled our date on that day, but I didn't notify her. I quickly devised my terrible scheme. I must inform you of any event that occurred earlier in our connection. When she was getting ready one day, I took a Polaroid of her buttocks. It was just a close-up of her buttocks, and there was no way to identify her from the image. I didn't believe she'd give a she became enraged. I've never seen her that enraged before. She was prepared to battle for that photograph, but I made every attempt to keep it away from her. She tried to tear it, but she couldn't. I told her to give it to me and I'd chop it up. She takes out a pen and begins marking it, then finds scissors and cuts it up. I set fire to the remnants in front of her. She remained enraged for some time and lectured me on how she did not want any naked images of herself to ever exist. I can't express how much she despised the notion of anybody possessing nudes of her. She was astounded. She didn't speak to me for almost a week, and we were on the verge of breaking up but she eventually accepted that I didn't believe it would have affected her and that I would never attempt it again. Now, let's go on. I had my plan in place, and we had made preparations for her to come to my house. I shared a nice home with my closest buddy, yet I lived like a bachelor. My room featured just a bed, a computer table with a chair, a dresser, and an alarm clock on the floor next to my bed. I went to the kitchen and retrieved an additional chair to put at the foot of my bed. I went out and acquired another alarm clock, which I placed on the chair. I wanted it to seem blatantly out of place. We had after she came over. I maintained my calm and continued having two dash three times each week for another two weeks or so. I made a point of trying various postures and keeping her tilted such that the alarm clock was gazing straight at her. I wanted to keep going, but I felt it was time to call it quits. On a final day, I disconnected the clock, placed it next to my computer, and moved the chair to a different room. I made sure she saw me, but I pretended to be cleaning up. Because I understood how cruel my plan was, I began to have second thoughts about it. I chose to wait a day, which grew into two, and then I decided to call and confront her after approximately a week. I wasn't sure whether I was going to exact my vengeance or not. I called her and informed her I knew she was meeting her cousin. His name escapes me. She denied it, but I informed her that someone had told me they had seen them kissing. She eventually accepted it, but claimed it had just begun this week. I said, how can you your cousin? She said, you know, he's not my cousin. We dispute some more, and I tell her I've known her for a month. Then she attempted to blame me for not saying anything when she found out, and she made a pretty smart statement that I can't recall. I then informed her that there was one more thing she needed to know. Me, do you recall the alarm clock that was sitting on the chair next to my bed? Yes, she says. Me, have you ever pondered why it was there? Her, no, not at all. Me, remember how we did doggy at the foot of the bed, cowgirl with you facing the foot, and so forth the past few times we had. Her, 
What the heck are you talking about? Me. It was a spy camera, you filthy, disgusting cheating. I smashed the phone on the ground. For whatever reason, I dialed from a pay phone. For the following few hours, my pager blew up. It didn't stop vibrating for 30 minutes after I switched it back on. My phone at home was inundated with voicemails. Where texts began with screams and tears, then threats, then pleading, then proposing bribes, and then she would repeat the pattern she returned to my home the following day and pounded on the door for at least an hour, but I didn't respond. Even though the frequency had dropped significantly, the calls and texts continued to come in for weeks. She also came to my house a couple more times, but I never opened the door and was occasionally not there. I eventually answered the phone, but when she asked for the recordings, I told her I had no idea what she was talking about. I listened to her beg, scream, and plead, and finally chimed in with, I'm not sure what cassettes you're talking about. I hung up the phone and never talked to her again. The phone calls and texts gradually ceased, and I went about my business. There was never a concealed camera, although she is unaware of this to this day. It was simply an old radio alarm clock that looked clunky enough to pass for a spy camera if you weren't looking. I came to regret it since it must have tormented her for a long time, but it just took me approximately six months to recover from my shattered heart. Story 2 Fiancé, 28 female, cheated on me, 26 male, after 10 years of being together. I don't usually talk about my personal life on the internet, but this has been bugging me since the beginning of the year. I'm in a band, and when I left town, I had the unsettling feeling that things weren't quite the same as they had been. I just got the impression that something had changed in our connection. I questioned and even suggested that if there was another person there, we might work through whatever had happened. She, of course, fought this tooth and nail, and we continued on our way for a bit, but I could see we weren't connecting as well as we should have. My buddy and I were at her house one day when he proposed that we go through her possessions to see if it was my s slash of doing this. I was confident that it couldn't be my s slash of doing this. My boyfriend and I had been dating since we were 14, and I felt I know her better than she did. My cousin sent me a message on her Snapchat, telling me that her boyfriend had stopped things with her because he didn't feel good about them being together before she was single. I went into her Snapchat and read the message. In one of the articles, it was said that she didn't want to lose this other person because of me. I've received texts stating that she is just continuing with me for the sake of my dog. While visiting my mother-in-law, I checked her Facebook page and discovered messages from the guy from while I was away, like I'm at the taco restaurant, hinting that they had also gone on dates. She admitted to him while I was in the shower and I was relieved. It's a lot and it's still bothering me eight months later. I brought up all of the texts with her and she admitted everything while still stating that she wants to work through things and keep attempting to communicate with me. Despite the fact that we've been back together for over six months, I'm still furious about the adultery that occurred. I'm always on the lookout for it to happen again or anticipating that something is about to go terribly wrong. Even though we were splitting up, I felt like I couldn't function without my fiancé, but now I'm starting to worry that my mental health is being harmed by my anticipation of her betraying me once again. I'm completely at a loss on what to do.